other question to Pope Francis. Pope Francis, I would like to ask you a question as a religious brother. I am Francisco. Last year, I spent a sabbatical year in the United States. There was one thing that made a great impression on me there and at times made me suffer. I saw many, even bishops, criticizing your leadership of the church, and many even accuse the Jesuits, who are actually a kind of critical resource of the Pope, of not being so now. They would even like the Jesuits to criticize you explicitly. Do you miss the criticism that the Jesuits used to make of the Pope, the Magisterium, and the Vatican? Answer of the Pope. You have seen that in the States the situation is not easy. There is a very strong reactionary attitude. It is organized and shapes the way people belong, even emotionally. I would like to remind those people that in the indietrismo, that's to say, being backward looking, is useless and we need to understand that there is an appropriate evolution in the understanding of matters of faith and morals as long as we follow the three criteria that Vincent of Levens already indicated in the 5th century. Doctrinivance ut annis consolidetur dilatetur tempore sublimetur etate. In other words, doctrine also progresses, expands and consolidates with time and becomes firmer, but is always progressing. Change develops from the roots upward, growing in accord with these three criteria. Let's, let us get to specifics. Today, it is a sin to possess atomic bombs. The death penalty is a sin. We can't employ it, but it was not so before. As for slavery, some pontiffs before me tolerated, tolerated it, but things are different today. So you change. You change, but with the criteria just mentioned. I like to use the upward image, that is, ut annis consolidetur, dilatetur tempore, sublimetur etate. Always on this path, starting from the root, with sap that flows up and up, and that is why change is necessary. Vincent of Lewens, in southern France, makes the comparison between human biological development and the transmission from one age to another of the depositum fidei, which grows and is consolidated with the passage of time. Here, our understanding of the human person changes with time, and our consciousness also deepens. The other sciences and their evolution also help the Church in, his, in this growth in understanding. The view of Church doctrine as monolithic is erroneous. But some people opt out. They go backward. They, they are what I call indietristi. When you go backward, you form something close, disconnected from the roots of the Church, and you lose the sap of revelation. If you don't, if you don't change upward, you go backward, and then you take on criteria for change other than those our faith gives for growth and change. And the effects on morality are devastating. The problems that moralists have to examine today are very serious, and to deal with them, they have to task to take the risk of making changes, but in the direction 
I was saying. You have been to the United States and you say you have felt a climate of closure. Yes, this climate can be experienced can be experienced in some situation. And there you can lose the true tradition and turn to ideologies for support. In other words, ideology replaces faith, membership of a sector of the church replaces membership of the church. I want to pay tribute to Arupe's courage. When he became superior general, he found a society of Jesus that was, so to speak, bogged down. General Ledoshovsky had drafted the epitome. Do you young people know what the epitome is? No, nothing remains of the epitome. It was a selection of the constitutions and rules all mixed up. But Ledoshovsky, who was very orderly, with the mentality of the time said, I am combining it so that the Jesuits will be fully clear about everything they have to do. And the first specimen he sent to a Benedictine abbot in Rome, a great friend of his, who replied with a note, You have killed the society, the society with this. In other words, the society of the epitome was formed, the society that they experienced in the Navishit, albeit with great teachers who were of great help, but some taught certain things that fossilized the society. That was the spirituality that Arupe received, and he had the courage to set it moving again. Something got out of hand as is inevitable such as the question of the Marxist analysis of reality. Then he had to clarify some matters, but he was a man who was able to look forward. And with what tools did Arupe confront reality? With the spiritual exercises. In 1969, he founded the Ignatian Center for Spirituality. The secretary of this center, Father Luis González Hernández was given the task of tra traveling around the world to give the exercises and to open this new panorama. You younger ones have not experienced these tensions, but what you say about some sectors in the United States reminds me of what we have already experienced with the epitome, which generated a mentality that was all rigid and contorted. Those American groups you talk about so close are isolating themselves. Instead of living by doctrine, by the true doctrine that always develops and bears fruit, they live by ideologies. When you abandon doctrine in life to replace it with an ideology, you have lost, you have lost as in war.